Throughout the ages, countless reports of unexplained and baffling discoveries have been reportedly made deep within the mines of Earth. Regardless of the type of mine, or indeed its depth, it seems that these peculiar stories continue to surface, and usually only by word of mouth. Often attached to these fascinating tales, you will find stories of these artifacts being seized, destroyed, or simply reburied. We are often confronted with an apparent cover-up, vast resources and manpower being harnessed to hide these facts from the world. The motives for choosing to conceal such artifacts from the world could indeed be endless, though regardless of motive, we feel it is imperative that we continue to expose these stories to the Earth if we have compelling witnesses and unmistakable evidence of a cover-up. Regardless of physically remaining evidence, we feel by conveying this said knowledge, we are improving all of our chances regarding their discovery. Thankfully, on the rare occasion, something will be found by a particular person, a person aware of these suppression facts. And Mr. Kasatskin is one of them. Deep beneath the city of Donetsk, within the Rostov region of Russia, a large foundation of sandstone can be found, something known as rock shield of Carboniferous age. It is about 300 to 360 million years old and is lined with distributions of coking coals that are also of around the same age. Astonishingly, Mr. Kasatskin has discovered, upon the roof of this shaft of coal, an imprint of a chariot wheel, an imprint undoubtedly made before the rock had formed around it. He also discovered another imprint, a small distance further along the shaft. It must be noted that these imprints have remained buried deep within these seams of rock for many millions of years. If a scientific analysis could have been undertaken upon this artifact, it could have shaken our understandings of world history, just like so many other artifacts we have been made aware of, all but a few now stolen from the public domain. Upon realizing the implications of his discovery, Mr. Kasatskin, an extremely experienced foreman in ventilation and safety engineering, specializing in seismic prognosis, thankfully took several photographs of his miraculous and now concealed discovery before officially reporting it and requesting a scientific evaluation. When his boss notified the owners of the mine in the hopes of getting an analysis of the artifact with an attempt to preserve it, to his boss's surprise, they demanded he continued the work through the shaft so that it could be subsequently flooded, which is unfortunately what has occurred, making further exploration of the sites impossible. Mr. Kasatskin told GreaterAncestors.com the wheel was printed on sandstone upon the roof of the coal seam. Drifters tried to cut it away after finding out about the owner's reluctance to preserve such a wonderful discovery. They used pickaxes and sledgehammers to try to extract it and take it to the surface, but sandstone was so strong that having been afraid of damaging the print, they left it in place. At present, the mine has been officially closed since 2009 and access to the object is impossible. The equipment is dismantled and the layers are already flooded. He stated that he's investigated further regarding the Western mine's history with the fellow miners there and was able to confirm the existence of the other print within that mine. It had been damaged by blast hole driving and was little mentioned, though it was indeed there. He was sometimes in this cut, he said, and got to take a good look at it. He says that he was surprised, but also somewhat afraid to admit that these objects are of artificial origin. We, on the other hand, are excited by such a premise and will keep you posted on any further developments regarding the mine. We recently came across a most curious artifact, one which has been claimed as having once been found, just like a handful of other exquisite objects we have previously shared, within a lump of ancient coal. It is a once smelted, solid iron recreation of a face, whose owner could have lived an unimaginably long time ago. With the claim written by John D. Morris, PhD, quote, I was recently contacted by an older lady who grew up in the coal mining area of Appalachia. Her ancestors, having lived in the area for generations, her now deceased father was a miner who had once made a remarkable discovery embedded within a coal seam, a human face made from cast iron. Like most people, they had been taught that coal is far too old to contain any human artifacts. 
The miner was so proud and perplexed by his find, it eventually became a family heirloom and was simply named Man. As a large, heavy object, it was eventually used as an ornament, decades later becoming stored among his belongings. She distinctly remembers her father's story of its discovery and the care he had taken with this prized object, having recently rediscovered it among her father's possessions." End quote. The owner of this artifact has requested to remain anonymous and to withhold her identity. This makes the story even more appealing to us, as throughout our time researching these types of claims, and indeed artifact, we find that those who are pushing a supposed discovery, publicizing themselves while touring an object, are often in a search for a profit and recognition. Thus, as she is seemingly fearful of the artifact's disappearance, it would seem her story would align more with someone who possesses an item, not only of an extraordinary, incredibly controversial age, but also has a sentimental value one which outweighs any idea of selling the item or even risking losing it from exposing its location. How old is the so-called man? Who could have made it, pouring cast iron into a mold, resulting in an exact duplicate of the man's face in the form of a three-dimensional mask? Could we be peering at the face of an ancestor once of incredible importance? one from a lost civilization, a lost time within our planet's history. We find such possibilities incredibly intriguing. Lake Mead within Nevada, home to the famous Hoover Dam, one of the largest man-made concrete structures on Earth, and what many feel will be the last surviving remnant of our civilization's existence on this planet. Although it is also home to a number of other lesser-known yet just as astonishing feats of human engineering. Similar to that of the incredible finds we have previously covered, an ancient mine, and although we know it was created for the collection of salt, the date of its creation remains a mystery with evidential examples of activity within this mine, not only by a now lost civilization, but one that easily predated even that of the Native American himself. As mentioned in the Scientific American of 1926, quote, mines were operating in Nevada many centuries before the days of Aurora and Piyush of Virginia City. One of the discoveries made by archaeologists now delving into the ruins of Pueblo Grande. Many centuries is putting it mildly, for the finds show that mining was in progress at the beginning of the Christian era, some 20 centuries ago and there are strong indications which point to work created at an even earlier period." End quote. Mysterious circular carving, reminiscent of those of Baalbek, Aswan, Bazda Caves, Longyu, etc., are present within the mine, and although it is claimed these were made with stone picks, a true explanation as to the real technology or tools used to liberate this salt is yet to be discovered. Yet the reasoning behind such circular carving has seemingly been unraveled by a find at the bottom or oldest parts of the mine. The salt was seemingly isolated in these circular carving marks as they became deeper and deeper. Then the center block of rock salt was believed to have been broken off by hand and taken out by the miners. What is truly astonishing about this mine is its size. Although initial investigations of the cavern were to identify its purpose, this salt mine has since been bought by industries invested in salt production due to its quality. Yet the mystery surrounding how these ancient people discovered this vault of salt, or indeed how they carved their way through an entire mountain in its pursuit, if we assume them to have been primitive in nature and ability, remains an absolute enigma. However, if one were to allocate such feats to a more developed human state, identifying this huge deposit of salt, and indeed the adaptive stone-cutting technologies we feel were clearly used elsewhere, incorporated into this mining process, and explain how they managed to dig to such depths here, 
and indeed at other astonishing ancient sites the world over, are rather easier to explain. Yet, I digress. Regardless of our own suspicions as to how this incredible mine was created, its existence alone, we feel, is proof that those responsible had far more knowledge and capabilities than modern man gives them credit for. It is an incredibly ancient mine, one in which we and indeed many others within our field find incredibly compelling.